Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to remind you to check out our other Western podcasts released daily by going to otrwesterns.com or searching OTR Westerns in your podcast app of choice. I also wanted to invite you to check out our other podcast channel releasing non-Western shows by going to otnetcast.com or by searching otnetcast in your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is February 5th, 1956, and the title is Legal Revenge. Hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed, thanks to Accuray, they satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Sam? Kitty, what do you have? Uh, I'm going out to Delmonico's for something to eat. If Marshal Dillon comes in, tell him to wait, will you? I'll send him on to Delmonico's. No, he's to wait here. It's Doc who's trying to find him. Oh. You look tired, Sam. I ought to. I've been tending bar for 12 hours steady. Well, what happened to the help you hired last night? You had the wrong idea, Kitty. Huh? I'm in business to sell whiskey, not give it away to anybody who needs a drink and can't pay for it. <laughs> Is that what he was doing? Was well, like caught him at it. <laughs> uh, hello, Kitty. Sam. Oh, Marshal. Matt, you ought to stay right here at the bar. What? I promised Doc if you came in, I'd keep you here. He's been looking all over town for you. Oh, I thought Doc was delivering a baby down on Salt Creek. Well, he got back about a half hour ago. <laughs> oh, what does he want me for? It's about some trouble with a man and his wife called Tebbs. Tebbs? Well, not where he delivered the baby. This was in a sod hut about a mile above the crossing. Ah, well, well, what about him? Here he comes. He'll tell you. Here he is, Doc. Oh, fine. So you're a good girl, kiddies. <laughs> yes, you are. You're a good girl. I might never have found him. What's all this about these Tebbs people, Doc? Well, they're having trouble, Matt. Oh, what kind of trouble? Well, I stopped by to say hello and get acquainted and... Well, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> but the woman, she didn't act like she wanted anybody around. And then I heard the man yell at me from inside. She tried to stop me, but I went in anyways. He was lying there on the bed, Matt, with a bad knife wound in his leg. Oh? Yes. It's festered and it's given him a fever, and I don't think he can walk with it. Uh, did he say what happened? Well, he claimed it was an accident, but he was holding a six-gun under that blanket, Matt. Well, what for? For his wife. He's scared to death of her. I think she knifed him, and I think she's waiting for a chance to finish him off. <laughs> you better get down there, Matt. Maybe too late already. <laughs> Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, 
Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. That's the tab's place, all right, Mr. Dillon. That's the way Doc described it, all right, Joseph. Including the wife out there hoeing in the dirt. She's letting on she don't see us. I didn't expect we'd be very welcome here. Just wait till she finds out you're a marshal. And I'm not going to tell her, Chester. Not right off, anyway. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh... We were looking for a drink of water. Crick's over yonder. Yeah, but you got a well here. Water's no better than the crick. Okay, we'll use the crick. But uh, first I'd like to talk to your husband. My husband? What about? Oh, just uh, I wanted to get acquainted. He ain't here. No. Oh. Well, we go get a drink, and then we'll come back and wait for it. No. Who are you talking to, Glory? Who's out there? Nobody. Now you stay quiet. He's feeling poorly, mister. I don't want nobody bothering him. Well, we won't bother him. You stay out of there. Well, then I'm coming, too. You better wait outside, Justin. Yes, sir. That hut can't hold more than three people anyway. Hello, I knew I heard somebody. Your wife says that you're sick, Ted. I told you to leave him alone. I told you not to be troubling him. Well, I'm only being neighborly, ma'am. If he's sick, maybe I can help. So you're a neighbor, mister? Well, my partner and I are planning a homestead nearby. As soon as we can decide on a good piece of land. Now, you get it staked out, then you'll come see us, mister. Everything will be fine, then. Now, Flory, don't be that way. Me being sick and her having to do all the chores makes her kind of edgy, mister. And being up nights, it's what's hardest on her. I ain't complaining. Yeah, I know, Flory, but I can tell. Mister, I got an idea. Said you wanted to help. Uh, sure, sure, anything I can do. Be willing to sit up with me tonight? No, Ben. Ah, you need some rest, Flory. You see, I got a... I got a fever, mister. I get to tossing them asleep. I throw off a blanket, all like that. Now, you don't look like you've been sleeping at all. Huh. Will you do it, mister? Sit up with me? No. No, he ain't going to sit up with you. Oh, why not, ma'am? I, I don't mind. Because I ain't going to sleep in here with no stranger about. That's why. Oh. Well, I didn't think she would. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll spend the night on the ground outside, if you don't mind. We do mind. Rory, you ain't acting like a wife. You ain't acting like a wife at all. You can stay, mister. No, oh, fine, good. Wait a minute, mister. Yeah, what? I was just wondering if maybe tomorrow you'd be willing I ought to get into Dodge and see the doc. 
There's a wagon outside. No, you don't. Oh, shed up. Oh, I sure will take you in, mister. We'll be glad to. <laughs> drive him into Dodge tomorrow, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, we'd better. But why don't she want him to go? Well, I guess Doc was right, Chester. She put a knife in him, and now she's trying to finish him off. Well, if he's got a six-gun under his blanket, why don't he just shoot her? That would take care of him, feed him. He's getting more fever every day, and he can hardly walk anyway. Well, he sure can't last much longer with him staying awake, trying to keep an eye on her all the time. Yeah. Chester, I think I'm going to go in there and tell him who I am and load him into a wagon tonight. This has gone on long enough. I reckon you better, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Where's your wife? She went around back, mister. Look, uh, Tebbs. Hmm? I'm going to take you into Dodge tonight. You are? Oh, that'll be fine. Oh, except for Florida. You want to tell me what's going on here? What do you mean? I'm not a homesteader, Tebbs. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Huh? That's right. And I'm going to take you into Dodge, Flory or no Flory. You need sleep and you need care. Oh, uh... Now, you can tell me your story when you want to. No, uh... No story. I just got hurt a little, is all. Yeah, look here, Marshal. You got to understand, Flory. She don't. She she don't mean what she says. She gets all riled up over nothing. She, well, you know how women are. What are you trying to say, Tebbs? Well, I, I'm I'm fine right here. And Flory, yeah, she's a good nurse, Marshal. You mean you don't want to go to Dodge? No, oh, shucks, I'll be up and around in a couple of days. Don't you worry about me. All right. But I'll be back. Chester. Chester. Get your hands up and turn around, Marshal. Oh, she's got a shotgun, Mr. Dillon. And I'll use it, too. She was listening at the window. Now my hands are up, Flory. I'm taking your gun. She got my gun, too, Mr. Dillon. You're making a bad mistake, Flory. I won't have you nor nobody else meddling where you don't belong. Now get your horses and ride out of here. All right. But we'll be back. I'm going to be sitting right by that door, Marshal. First thing I see or hear gets a load of buckshot. It won't be us, Flory. But we'll be close enough to hear if you do shoot somebody. I, I couldn't help it, Mr. Dillon. She come ooching around the side of the hut, and I didn't even see that cussed shotgun until it was too late. Yeah, neither did I. What are we going to do? Yeah, there's nothing we can do tonight. But tomorrow in the daylight... Now we got our rifles. We'll think up some tricks for her. Where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your favorite easy chair? Or... Out driving? Oh, there you are. In the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, 
is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other, firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. See her around no more, Mr. Dillon. Uh, she must be inside the hut, Chester. Well, I hope she don't come charging out of there with that shotgun blade. <laughs> it would be a bad way to start the day, wouldn't it? I can't think of none worse, especially on an empty stomach. Yeah. Well, there she is. Hmm? Now, wait a minute. It's all right. She isn't armed. Come on over here, Marshal. Now, what's she up to? Yeah, it's hard to say with a woman like that. I thought you'd be back this morning. Yes, and I told you we would. We're going to take your husband into Dodge, ma'am. You're too late, Marshal. Too late? He died during the night. What? It was too much for his heart. He always did have a weak heart. Where is he, Flory? Lying there inside, Marshal. Why? Don't you believe me? I believe you, but I want to have a look at him. What for? I got him all wrapped up in his blanket, ready for burying i go dig a grave for him if you want to help so much. All right, we'll dig a grave after I've seen him. You got no respect for the dead, Marshal? It's the living that bothers me right now, Flory. I'm going to have a look at him now, Flory. You're no better than a coyote, Marshal. You don't have to watch. Oh, go ahead. I don't care. Unbutton his shirt here. All right, what did you use, Flory? Use? For what? I might have known he couldn't stay awake forever. He fell asleep and you stabbed him in the heart with a needle or something. That doesn't show much, does it? All right, I'll tell you. Don't matter none anyway. I I killed him. Why would you want to kill your husband, Flora? My husband. He wasn't my husband. He killed my husband, Marshal. We never seen him before. He rode by here and started trouble. Over me it was. My husband pulled a knife, but but he shot him. And I swore I'd kill him for it, and I did. Why didn't you explain all this to Doc Adams when he was out here? Out of me last night. And let you take him and hang him? I had to kill him myself, Marshal. It's a promise I made my husband while he was dying. And I'm going to have to arrest you. You can't do nothing to me for this. You murdered a man, Flory. You're wrong, Marshal. You just admitted it. Well, I ain't doing no more talking. You take care of him and we'll go into Dodge. But I won't be in jail long. You'll see. Ah, good morning, Chester. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. What you got there? That's a mail. Oh, did you pick it up? Yeah, I picked it up. I was down there anyway. How's Flory? She ain't said a word. Go get her, will you? Go get... What for? She was right, Chester. I can't keep her in jail. But, Mr. Dillon, we just Go can't... Go get her, will you? Yes, sir. Come on out, boy. 
You're turning me loose? Not me. Mr. Gillen is. It's about time. Morning, Flory. Not much of a jail you got, Marshal. Well, it's not strong enough to hold you. Of course it ain't. Flory, the man you killed, you told me you've never seen him before, huh? I never had. What was his name? George Bassett. What else did you know about him? He was wanted. Dead or alive. He was wanted? I got a circular on him in the mail, Chester. It's there on my desk. A circular? Well, forevermore. How did you know he was wanted, Flory? He said so. Now, that's hard to believe. Now, he told me. When he was bothering me. Before he killed my husband. He said one more wouldn't matter. I guess he planned to kill me, too, later. Only he hadn't figured on getting cut up. And he needed me after that. Yeah. Now, why didn't you tell me this out there, Flory? I didn't think you'd believe me, Marshal. Yeah, well, maybe you were right. I never heard of George Bassett before. You heard of him now? Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some reward money coming, Flory. Marshal. Yeah, what? You say it. Say what, Flory? Oh, please. Now, oh. that you don't want the money? That you wouldn't take it? Thank you, Marshal. Thank you for saying it right. I, I feel some cleaner for that. Goodbye. Goodbye, Flory. <laughs> In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, almost anybody who had a few dollars could open a bank of his own. And by the same token, anybody who had a gun could try to rob it. And next week, a man does. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Helen Klebe, Lawrence Dobkin, and Stacey Harris. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.